The 60s were a big boom for tokusatsu media. With the success of the Godzilla series, many other studios wanted to get a piece of that man in suit pie. It's in the 60s that we see a big boom in tokusatsu properties. A notable one is Gamera, which was a box office rival to Godzilla. But Togo wasn't just on the big screen. It was on the little one too. TV was a big place for Togo shows like Ambassador Magma, Spectre Man, Giant Robo, and Ultra Q. Now I'm purposely leaving out one very, very big show. That show happens to be the subject of today's review. None other than the 1966 classic fantasy tokusatsu series, Ultraman. Ultraman was released in 1966, and was the second series of the Ultra franchise, following Ultra Q. But it was the first in the Ultraman series. The show was created by special effects legend Eiji Tsuraya, who also did the effects of the early Godzilla movies. In a way, Godzilla and Ultraman are brothers. This is evident by the use of leftover Godzilla props in the Ultra series. Ultraman centers around the Science Special Search Party, SSSP for short. They're also called the Science Patrol in the English dub. As they fight monsters and aliens with the help from our hero, Ultraman. The show features Susume Kurobe as Shin Hayata, Akiji Kobayashi as Tojiro Muramatsu, Hiroko Sakurai as Akiko Fuji, Sandayo Dokumamushi as uh, Arashi Daisuke, and Masanari Nihei as Ide Mitsuhiro. Ultraman himself is also portrayed by a suit actor, Ben Furia. Music for the show was done by Kunio Miyauchi, who happens to be my favorite composer for Toku Media. The show follows a Monster of the Week format. The series would prove immensely popular and would lead to a massive franchise we have today with new entries almost every single year since the 60s. Ultraman as a franchise has been something that I was aware of my whole life, but I never really dove into it until around like 2020. I had actually owned a copy of Ultraman Towards the Future when I was around 6 years old, but I didn't remember any of it. I don't really think I watched any of it. I actually got into Ultraman after watching Ultraman 80, and then it just went from there. The original Ultraman was actually the third Ultraman show I watched, and frankly, I've been a massive fan ever since. Uh, I've watched almost every single season, except one. I'll get to that one eventually, though. And I actually got the chance to meet Ultraman, alongside Ultra 7 last year at Anime Expo. That was definitely a highlight of my year. Now, it's been nearly two years since I've watched the show in full, but I know I love this show a lot. It's got that early sci-fi charm with retro-futuristic vehicles and technologies, like the spacesuits in the Kila episode, or the main jet, the Jet VTOL. Monster of the Week format lent itself very well to this kind of show, and we get to see Ultraman fight a variety of crazy creatures. Said crazy creatures are actually iconic to the Ultraman franchise and get appearances even to this day, and I love a lot of these original monsters. My favorites are Bolton, Geronimon, Gamora, Red King, Balton, Dada, Mephilus, Naranga, Zeton, Gabora, Telezdon, and Zareb. That was a lot, but I like them all. <laughs> Each episode focuses on some kind of mystery which the SSSP must solve, which usually leads them straight into the path of a giant monster or alien. The show has many great episodes. My personal favorites are Defeat the Invaders, The Blue Stone of Baraji, The Lawless Monster Zone, Pass Part to Infinity, The Demons Rise Once Again, Overthrow the Surface, Mystery Comet Suifon, The Forbidden Words, The Little Hero, and Farewell Ultraman. The show has great effects for its time, which still hold up great to today. The music is great, Kunio Miyauchi brings a great jazzy feel to the battles, and the theme for the SSSP is such a fun march. I love the miniature works and outfits done for the show, the bright orange SSSP uniforms look super good, and the blue uniforms are also really good. The show's characters, however, do leave a lot to be desired. With them not really showing a lot of personality, especially the show's lead, Shin Hayata. None of the SSP are really given much outside of their 
archetypal outlines. Arashi's a sharpshooter, Muramatsu's the captain, Ide's the engineer, and Fuji's the token girl. And like all shows, not every episode hits. Though the show hits more than it misses. Whether due to a slow or awkward pacing, just kind of dull writing, or just the occasional not-so-good premise, the show, again, doesn't always hit. The only episodes I personally didn't like are The Coast Guard Command, Secret of Milaganda, and The Pearl Oyster Protection Directive. The original Ultraman is a classic and deserves to be revered as such, with fun premises, wacky monsters, great jazzy music, mystery, and plenty of that 60s sci-fi camp. The original Ultraman is sure to be a very, very fun time. Ultraman, thank you. Ultraman, thank you.